Hey, good evening, church family. Uh, hope you've had a great week. Uh, those that are joining our uh, our Bible study, uh, welcome. I uh, hope you have a have had a blessed week. Um, uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what God's Word has to say uh, tonight. Hey, also, um, if if you're uh, watching and you're not part of South Lakewood, if there's something that, that we could pray for, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, you could just message, uh, through, through our, our Facebook page and, and know that we would, we will, uh, put your request on our prayer list and we'd love to pray for you. Uh, church family, you should have received a prayer sheet, uh, today, uh, in, um, your email. Uh, a couple things. Uh, first of all, this Sunday, I hope you're excited as I am, uh, is our Sunday of opening everything back up. So Sunday morning, uh, Sunday night, and then uh, and, and we'll start with the next, next Wednesday. Um, be praying for it. Invite someone. Okay. Uh, and uh, Pray that God just uses this and, and, you know, as we talk, not so much going back to normal, but using this to, to really go forward, uh, with, with, with the gospel, uh, and what Christ wants to do through us here, uh, in Tulsa. Okay. Also, a circle of blessings will meet this Saturday at nine o'clock in the activity building. All ladies are encouraged invited uh, to attend, and so uh, be praying for that. Uh, men, here in a couple weeks, uh, we'll be starting back our Thursday uh, Bible Bible study time, and so uh, be looking uh, for that, okay? As for our, our prayer our prayer needs, uh, one of them I, that I want to update on, uh, remember Ray and Jackie's uh, daughter-in-law, Vanessa, I uh, had surgery, doing well, supposed to be going home uh, this afternoon. Just remember her, remember the family. Uh, continue to remember Miss Marina. She recovers from, from hand surgery, okay? Uh, remember our, our, our workers, our frontline workers, those that are still dealing with COVID. Uh, we see some numbers going down, but there are still those that are, that are in harm's way. Uh, let's pray for them. Uh, pray that the vaccines will work. Um, let's pray for our nation, our our, our leaders. Um, let's pray that revival, uh, revival would break up. Revival is what's going to change things. Uh, it, it's it's people getting serious about the Lord, and it's those. Uh, that will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And uh, when the spiritual gets right, that's when everything else starts getting right. And so uh, let's pray that that'll happen. Pray for those on our prayer list that are lost, that need Jesus Christ. And, and may we continue to take them uh, before the throne, okay? Hey, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, we thank you that we can uh, gather together this way, Lord, opening up your word. Uh, Lord, we ask that your word just, just speak to us uh, tonight. Lord, we bring these prayer requests before you. Lord, we pray especially for Miss Maureen and, and just heal her hand. Lord, we pray for Vanessa Smith, Lord, and help her as she recovers. Lord, I pray for our frontline workers, those that are de dealing with COVID. Lord, our essential workers, Lord, just uh, strengthen them, know that they're being prayed for. Uh, Lord, and through all this, we pray that, uh, Lord, you would work in such a way, hearts would be made right with you, Lord, and uh, we'd see salvation of souls, we'd see churches strengthened. Uh, Lord, as we open up, Lord, I pray we never take for granted what we have. And Lord, um, that we wouldn't just go to church, that we would we would strive to, to be your church. 
Lord, and uh, we pray that for this weekend and as we open up, Lord, that those that are needing a church family, those that you would send our way to hear the message of Jesus Christ, Lord, that uh, they would come. Lord, may we be a group of people that would just love the community like Jesus. Lord, help us to be your eyes and your hands and your feet. And may the words we speak be the words that you would speak. Lord, may we lift you up in, Lord, your word promises that if you are lifted up, you would draw all men to you. Lord, may we see that happen. Be with our time tonight. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. If you have a copy of God's word uh, with you, uh, I want to invite you first to uh, Matthew chapter 9. Um, and we're just going to read these verses. We're not going to stay so much here, but th there's a word I want uh, want to really bring out. Uh, Matthew chapter 9, we see uh, the same word in Mark chapter 1 and verse 40 and, and Luke chapter 6 and, and verse 34, and we'll get to those. But Matthew chapter 9 and verse uh, 36, starting with verse 36, says this, When he saw the multitudes, this is talking about Jesus, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. That, that's the word I want us to to zone in on uh, tonight, compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherds. Then he saith unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. It says when Jesus saw the multitudes, you know, the multitude is, it's not just a small number. It, it, it's, a, it's a large number that will entail all kinds of people. And when I, when I was reading this, it says he saw the multitudes. You know, when it comes, multitudes, it, it'll have all kinds of people, all kinds of backgrounds, to be honest, uh, you know, it will have, pardon me, maybe many different religious backgrounds that that make up a multitude. And it says that Jesus saw this multitude and, and he was moved with compassion. Why? Because they fainted, because they were scattered. Because they were like sheep having no shepherd. They were just sheep going around in circles. We see this same word in Mark chapter 1 and verse 40. And there came a leper, one that, was, was that wasn't to be touched, one that was unclean, one that society wouldn't didn't have anything to do with. It says, a leper came down beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And in verse 41, Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be thou clean. We see in Mark chapter 6 and verse 34, Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were a sheep not having a shepherd and began to teach them many things. This was Jesus that, that saw a crowd, that saw a multitude, that saw, saw uh, 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 what society would clean, deem unclean and dirty. Uh, Jesus saw in verse in Mark 6, uh, says much people and was moved with compassion. He made time for them. He, he wanted to build relationship with them. He allowed himself to be touched. There was this, this caring side uh, about Christ. And that's why people came. You know, and listen, folks, if he's, he, if he's our example, 
Do we show that kind of compassion when it comes to a, to a multitude, to a, uh, many types uh, of groups, uh, those that we, we, we would not normally want to touch uh, much people. Uh, I like what, uh, you, uh, U.S. Pastor Chris Say said it, he a while ago he um, he wrote in Leadership Magazine. He said one of our greatest obstacles is that the people we refer to as the lost may be more spiritual than most of us pastors. I read that. And I'm like, boy, could there be some truth? Is there truth to that? But more spiritual than our pastors. And if pastors aren't spiritual, guess what? Churches aren't going to be spiritual. It says it is difficult to teach the spiritual disciplines of prayer, study, meditation uh, to people who are seeking to know God with more clarity of passion than we are. I would add this. It's hard to to tell people to share if we want to talk about prayer, study, meditation on God's word, I would throw in even sharing the gospel. It's sad that we see others that will take these spiritual disciplines and maybe in a you know wrong gospel, a wrong message. Do it with more fervor and passion than those that, that have the truth. And I think one of the, the main issue is we have stopped being like Jesus. Jesus looked at uh, the crowd that was many and he was moved with compassion. When, when we look out in our city, down our, our neighborhood streets, when we go to the store, What do we see? And how does that move us? You know, the issue, well, number one issue is this, is a lack of compassion. But there's another obstacle that we deal with. And, and that's the word that we find in Matthew chapter 28, go. We have a problem many times with compassion for whatever reason, and we have a problem with going. So I want, I wanted to start tonight's study tonight, and we'll go and finish it up next week. If we have a problem with going, what about this thought? What if God brought them to you? What if God brought them to you? Have you ever have you ever been at a point where you just was sitting down for dinner? Or you're watching your favorite, you're in the middle of your favorite TV show, only to have a knock on the door. You reluctantly get up. With the thought, man, I hate being bothered. And you go to the door, and you open the door, and there stands two men or, or, or two women or even a mixture. And how many times when that has happened, it's one of two responses. You open the door, I'm not interested, click. Or you open the door, and... This day, I'm already a Christian, and we sh click, we shut the door, and that is it. You know, the the group that that I'm talking about, that that follow in, in the teach the Jehovah's Witness teaching, they they use a fervor and they have a passion for something that. As true believers, we've been commanded to do by Christ. And we have 
reluctantly not follow that many times. And yet here is these that they go and do what the Bible says to do, yet with a wrong message. And, you know, there's an opportunity that God opens up where he brings people that need to hear the, the message of Jesus Christ right to our front doors. And I wonder, do we look at that as with compassion or do we look at it as being bothered? Here is a, a group of people that need Jesus Christ. You know, the Jehovah's Witness, for you know, information's sake, um, we're starting in the eight, early 1870s. And, and, you know, in the 1800s, there was this, what they would call the, the Restoration Movement. And, and different religious denominations, religious groups rose up claiming to claiming that uh most churches had gone apostate and this was the 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 true uh, uh or group getting back uh to the truth uh you know sadly they they identify as christian But and they get their their name from their belief that God's personal name is Jehovah. But really, the the main word is Yahweh, and they call themselves the Watchtower Bible, as many of us know, the Watchtower Tra Bible and Track Society, mainly because the the, the primary reason of uh, their mission is to go door to door and hand out millions of Jehovah's Witness versions of the Bible, and various information tracks. The problem is their version of the Bible is so mistake-filled. It, it, it's a translation uh, based on what they think. There is no, it's not scholarly uh uh, wrote or studied, but is based on, on their thoughts and in and, and, and the, the tracks and things that they so uh, passionately uh, go to um, give out the times that, that they go door to door. It, it is with a, it, it's a false message. Then I feel convicted then as we look at the ones that have the truth, what would happen if if we went with that kind of fervor, that kind of, of passion? You know, we look at uh this group as uh those that come door to door that, that want to just you know argue about their you know their their thoughts. Uh, they, they just want to tell that everybody is wrong and and, and that they need to get right. Um, we need to see it as an opportunity and have compassion. That just as Jesus said, this these are people without a shepherd. These are sheep without a shepherd, without a leader that are just that are. Satan has, has filled their minds with a falsehood, and, and yet they think it's the truth. And they're going door to door. And my friends, they're on a road to hell if they don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. You know, and, and just to help us maybe understand a little bit more, uh, I, I want to share some terms that... Uh, at least this week, and, and some of their what they stand on, so that we know how to converse and, and, and take that time. They they use uh, a word annihilation, and, and 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 it's this according to Jehovah's Witness, unbelievers will not receive eternal punishment, but will r rather be annihilated or, or cease to exist at the end. You see, if that's the case, 
we're just going to be annihilated or cease to exist. They don't believe in a hell. Arius was a heretic who lived in the 4th century AD who denied the fact that Jesus Christ was eternal God. Guess what? It's his arguments that Jehovah's Witness repeat. We even throw in Unitarians. In 19, uh, or, or pardon me, 1848, there was a cult that was founded by John Thomas named the Christadelphians. And, and they taught that Jesus Christ is not God and that the Holy Spirit is only a power. Guess what? That was a forerunner to Jehovah's Witness. Here's another term that is used, little flock. Another designation for the 144,000 who will live in heaven after their death. Other Jehovah's Witnesses are barred from heaven and are instead uh, in paradise. So they, they believe that there is uh, two different classes uh, of Christians or believers. Uh, you hear a lot, uh, and if you've talked with them, uh, they'll talk about Michael the Archangel. And according to, to the Watchtower Jehovah's Witness, that was God's uh, first creation who later became the man Jesus. And so as you know these terms and you know the background, uh, you begin to know where to even, in some, you know, a little crack to start with, that Michael was a creation of God and that later uh, became Jesus Christ. Their, their translation, I wouldn't even call it a translation, what they call the scriptures is a new world translation. That's their official uh, Jehovah's Witness Bible. And so when you talk to the Jehovah's Witness, guess what? They'll say, we will, we will believe the Bible. Well, listen, <laughs> maybe you've been there before, but if you haven't, you better make sure when you start discussing the Bible, what, what version do they have? Uh, because you will find that uh, many scriptures have been changed to fit their mind, mind, mindset. Uh, another uh, literature that is used is, is the studies in scripture. It's a seven volume work. Six of them, which were written by Charles Taze Russell, who was the, the founder of Jehovah's Witness. And, and uh, just like pretty much every other religion, you have the Bible and then uh, you have a set of works, set of books, set of periodicals. And so uh, just like that, Jehovah's Witness have the studies in Scripture, which expound on the basic teachings of Jehovah's Witness. Uh, many have seen the, the magazine that is used, the Awake magazine. Uh, you go, you go, you'll, you'll find the Awake magazine either handed out or laying somewhere. Okay. Uh, another book that, uh, they use is the Harp of God is a book by Judge Joseph Rutherford explaining, uh, the, the Watchtower theology. Another study book that is used is the truth that leads to everlasting life. And it's a study book designed to introduce one to Jehovah's Witness uh, teachings. And we, we say Jehovah's Witness and you hear the Watchtower. Uh, the Watchtower is the, the main publication of Jehovah's Witness. That, and from there they take uh, the publications and with a passion, uh, you know, they, they believe that that is part of what is needed to gain salvation. If you're not sharing, if you're not handing out tracts, if you're not trying to, to, to get people to um, join in the Jehovah's Witness, you're not going to be saved. So my friends, you see, there, there are many, well, all of them that that are working for their salvation. And we know what Paul said in, in Ephesians. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of ourselves. It's not of works. 
Salvation has never been about works. We don't work to, to keep our salvation. And we either make a, a, a decision that, you know what? For the cause of Christ, I, I'm going to visit. I'm going to try to build relationships. I guarantee you, if a Jehovah's Witness came to your door and said, you know what, I would like to have a Bible study. Guess what? They would come back. They would set up a time. What a great time. Then for you to share the truths of Jesus Christ, the truths of God's word. You know, and so that that's some terms. What, what do Jehovah's Witness believe? What do they practice? Well, one, uh, a big thing about the Jehovah's Witness is that they'll say there is, emphatically, they'll say there there is no trinity. They'll say we are anti-Trinitarian. Beyond of a doubt, they will say, beyond a doubt, the, the Trinity doctrine has confused and deluded people's understanding of God's true position. Why? One, they believe that God is the Father. That's it. That Jesus isn't God. In their translation, they, they'll, they'll omit and they change John chapter 1 and verse 1. They'll say, instead of the word was God, that the word was a God. And they believe that, that the Holy Spirit isn't a person, but, but just a power. But uh, the Holy Spirit is not, not a God. So therefore, there is uh, no trinity. You know, they, they claim that it prevents people from actually knowing the true God and from worshiping him on his terms. And, and really believe that Christianity from in the 4th century left the truth. And all those years went farther and farther away until the late 1800s. And now we have the truth. When it comes to God, they believe God the Father, Jehovah, the one true God is one person separate from Jesus Christ. And he is the only eternally existing being. That there is. Jehovah's Witness will say that Jesus Christ is special because he was created by God before all things. He's in fact the, the foremost angelic being identified in the Bible as Michael the archangel. And through the ages of living with Jehovah before his incarnation, Jesus came to be just like Father Jehovah. And because Jesus was perfectly obedient to Jehovah's will, they say he, he is the key to the knowledge of God. And part of his obedience to this, you know, some of this is we would deem out there. Part of the obedience was his death on an upright pole. There is no cross. Or they claim it's a, a torture state. Watch how argues that there is no bib uh, they will say that there is no biblical evidence for Christ having undergone crucifixion. As we begin to look at what the, this certain group of people believe, we see that how blind people can be. But listen, folks, there are blind people all around us. And many blind people have no idea that they're blind. And do we just look at, well, that's just them, they're wrong, we're right. Or do we look at and say, you know what, I see a blind, spiritually blind person. And are we, do we allow ourselves to be moved, uh, moved with compassion? See, the Jehovah's Witness believe that the Holy Spirit is a force and not a person. It's Je Jehovah's active force to accomplish his purposes. Uh, 
and they they claim that the misunderstanding all this goes back to the fourth century claims that a misunderstanding the holy spirit as a divine person did not arise until the fourth century that everything before the fourth century but then from the fourth century up to the 18th 19th that's when the truth came back when it comes to eternal life as you taught you find real quick as you're talking with uh, Jehovah's Witness, they divide into two classes. There is the 144,000 that, that constitutes the, 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 the anointed class, the, the little flock, who reign with Christ in heaven, who, who uh, are deemed the faithful and discreet slave, who provide guidance for the organization. Uh, you know, the great cloud of witnesses whose hope is to survive Armageddon and spend eternity on, on paradise on earth. As of 2010, though, the Watchtower counted 11,202 members of the anointed class alive. But Watchtower Society claims also that the number 144,000 was filled in, in 1937. And so in contrast to, to these two groups, the 144,000 that's, that's supposed that will be in heaven and, and the rest that uh, will be here on paradise earth, according to what they believe. Non-Jehovah's Witness, well, there will be no eternal existence. We'll be annihilated. We'll be done away with. We will cease to exist. And because of that, uh, Jehovah's Witness reject the idea of eternal punishment in hell. And that just the wicked will be uh, destroyed at Armageddon. You know, at the same time, it, you know, Jehovah's Witness don't believe in birthdays and holidays. Uh, they, they believe that this was, you know, has to do with ancient celebrations of deities and paganism. Uh, many know that blood transfusions are, are not allowed. They're forbidden from receiving blood transfusions, believing uh, that the Bible states to stain from blood. But at the same time, Jehovah's Witness are, however, permitted to receive blood fractions and expanders. It ways to skirt, um, you know, some of the main doctrines, and then government and military involvement are from getting are, are forbidden from engaging in in non-neutral activities. Jehovah's Witness will not engage in military service. And so knowing just a little bit about these that so passionately come to the doors. You know, it's amazing. They could be called all the names that we you could think of, but they still come to the doors. They still go out handing out tracts and publications. And many times... The first time, uh, first sign of ridicule, it stops us in our tracks from sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. There can be no easier way to evangelize when God just brings them to us, almost like divine appointments. And I want to encourage each and every one of us to make that time. We're talking about eternity. We're worried about a TV show and we're worried about dinner. And people's eternity is at stake. So what do we do? I like what Charles Spurgeon said. He said, I've heard it said that if there was a crooked stick and you want to show how crooked it is, you need not waste words in description. Place a straight one by its side, and the thing is done directly. So how 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 do we how do we show that that a stick is crooked? How do we show that a a, a set of doctrine, a set of thoughts is, is crooked? You put the truth next to it. 
Here's the thing, folks, that we'll see. And, and, you know, as we, we've talked about, uh, we've looked at those of the Islam religion. Uh, we looked at those that hold their relativism and postmodernism. All religions have, false religions have their roots in idolatry. They have a wrong understanding of God. They have a wrong understanding of his righteous requirements. And when you look at their belief, it becomes evident. It is clear as day. They're made up of fruitless branches of self-righteousness. They have gotten away from Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. In their mind, I've got to do this, 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 and this so that I can attain righteousness and be made right. And listen, the farther you get away from, from the message of Jesus Christ, what we would deem the crazier the, and foreign uh, the, the thoughts may will become. It's almost as if they get to a point where you can bribe God for works. The Apostle Paul spoke about this to the Jews in Romans chapter 10 and verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about what? To establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So guess what? God's word puts an ax to the root. It reveals perfect righteousness. It kills the, the, the need for, for man and showing, or it takes away let me put it this way. It takes away man's need to earn his place before God. Because man can't. Man can't. God did all the work through Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ said, it is finished. That's what salvation is all about. That's why Jesus said, I have all authority. That's why I want you to go. I have finished the work. I want you to go. I want you to preach it. I want you to proclaim it. I want you to herald it. To all those around. That's why Jesus said, I want, I, I want you to go to the bushes and shake. I want you to compel them to come. So here's the thing. No matter how much you can, we converse with a Jehovah's Witness about anything concerning faith. Okay? The underlying issue, the principal obstacle is their underlying belief that the Watchtower organization is the only Christian church and the Watchtower is infallible in all of its teachings. So you have this crooked stick how do you show this? you got to put the straight one next to it, and you see real quick. And so the goal I want is, and we'll end with this tonight. The goal is to be that the Bible ought to be our ultimate authority on any religious questions. So if there is a... a it doesn't even have to be one of, of Jehovah's Witness belief. Anybody that ha has a, a different belief than, than we do. It's not a place that we say, you're wrong, or you're an idiot, or I don't have time for you, or, or you know, Jesus looked at the multitude. And it says he was moved with compassion. He was moved. He said the harvest truly is plenteous. If the harvest is ready, what do you need? You need the workers. It's not, God, get those people right. He said, 
listen, they're ready to hear the message. The, the, the harvest is ready. I just need the workers to go. Sadly, they, there's workers going with the wrong message, and, and we find ourselves sitting back. Well, I don't have time. Uh, I'm uncomfortable. I, you know, I don't want to intrude. Folks, we are dealing with people's eternity here. Either they know Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, or they don't. If they do, praise God. If, if they don't, Lord, help us to go. Because we believe that Jesus Christ is coming back. And, and what will happen? We know what will happen if he comes back and they and they never trust him. To have compassion involves love. May we lovingly take God's word and stand it up to the crooked sticks that have been placed in the world and use God's standard to show what is right. I said Jehovah's Witness is just one of the one of the groups that we have. I, I feel I get convicted when I see that they do what we're supposed to do. They're going with the wrong message. Let me encourage each and every one of you that, that's watching tonight. May we go with the right message. Every single one of us come in contact with people on a daily basis. I believe our divine appointments by God. May we go having compassion like Jesus Christ with the right message of Jesus Christ that can make wrong people right. We'll look next week knowing a little bit of what uh, Jehovah's Witness believe. We'll look at points of contact and how we can share the gospel with them. Hey, remember, church family, we're opening up Sunday. I hope you're praying about it. I hope you're excited about that. I hope that uh, we look at it as not going backwards to normalcy, but boy, we use this as, as I wrote this week. Let's just, let's be radical for Jesus. Jesus was radical. The disciples were radical. Let us be radical for Jesus. Radical is not a bad term. Let's turn the world upside down now for him. Okay. And if you're watching tonight and you don't have a church home and, and you're, especially if you're in the, the Tulsa area, we would love to invite you to become, become and be our guest at South Lakewood and, and, and worship with us. Also, if you can't make it in person, we're, even though we're all opening things up, we're still going to stream it. And so, um, there's that opportunity. Okay, Let, let's close in prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it is true. Lord, even though many will take it and distort, try to distort it for their own gain, Lord, we, we, we thank you that your word remains true. It is inspired by you. It is breathed by you. There's nothing else needed. I, I thank you that Jesus, because of Jesus' work on the cross, there's nothing needed. Lord, I, I love the words, it is finished so much. And I thank you that salvation isn't based on me, but it's based on Jesus. Lord, thank you for our time. Lord, help us to be encouraged. Lord, may we become even more passionate about your message. Lord, and may we go into the world. Lord, and the opportunities that you bring to us. Lord, uh, how easy it is. Lord, you bring the opportunities to us many times. Lord, I pray that we'll take them. We'll have your eyes. We'll, we'll see the multitudes and we'll be moved with compassion. Lord, I love you so much. And it's in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. 
Amen. Every single one of you, I hope you have a blessed night and a great week. And church family, we'll see you on Sunday.